Hey, Raindrops. Got my boy, your favorite content creator and love and marriage expert, Dustin Ross, stepping in to my YouTube channel to talk to the cast of Love and Marriage DC. Yes, Love and Marriage DC new season kicks off Saturday, January 27th. And every week, Dustin will be interviewing a cast member from the show. Y'all gonna get all the tea, all the mess, and the rest for the whole season. This is so good. Make sure you like and subscribe to this channel and hit the notification button so you do not miss an episode. I love you, Raindrop. Mwah! Hi, Joy. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm wonderful. How are you doing today? You know, God is still in the blessing business. <laughs> Ain't he good? All the time. That's right. I know that's right, Joy. Well, I'm I'm very excited to be speaking with you today. So thank you for making time for this. Um, you've been such a great addition to the Love and Marriage DC family. So first of all, congratulations. Am I really? <laughs> Yes, you have, girl. Yes, you have. You the talk of the town. You have me, really. <laughs> okay. Talk of the town, Joy. How are you enjoying your experience being on Love and Marriage DC thus far? Mm, that is a loaded question. Um, <laughs> I have to say, we still continue to have so much support from those who watched us from Ready to Love. Mm -hmm. um, so I have to say, you know, we we still have those supporters that are still, you know, keeping us positive and, you know, fighting the trolls and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So we really appreciate, you know, that ready to love family coming over here to, you know, support us here at Love and Marriage DC. As far as Love and Marriage DC, <laughs> woo! <laughs> you know, scheduling therapy is important, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. I see where we're going with this. Uh, okay, so therapy has been necessary. So you've had some things you needed to talk about, huh, Joy? Well, I have to say, I, I, I don't know how to explain. You know, I I really thought we were coming in, you know, continuing, you know, our love journey on to like the next chapter. Yes. And, nope. We just <laughs> went, we went right into the drama. They were just like, Joy and Cookie, what drama? Like, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Like we here, we together, we in love. Like, <laughs> yeah. But now it 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 went full steam ahead with um, you know this this with the single moms, uh, conference that and I, it, it like lit like that was the first night like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow, Joy. Okay, so let's. I'm glad you bring up Ready to Love though, and, and your transition right from the Ready to Love Potomac series onto Love and Marriage DC. There's been a lot of questions and a lot of talk about timelines and Mexico and, you know, why you came back to D.C. For once and for all, when you have the floor here in this conversation, let's just clear that up for everybody. Joy, talk to me about you and Clifton um, coupling up and transitioning from Ready to Love, you spending time in Mexico and when you came back to the DMV to start participating in Love and Marriage D.C. Okay. Um, so immediately after Ready to Love, so I, I feel like that was November, October, November, whatever that was, I literally left a week after to be in Mexico. Okay. Um, so Clifton and I had, you know, we're locked in. So he was coming like every other week. Mm -hmm. to um, I came home for Christmas, um, you know, for a bit, went back to Mexico and I came back in March. So mm -hmm. immediately, you know, after that, Clifton and I, you know, together but mm -hmm. during that time while i was gone um i think clifton the premiere whatever the love and marriage dc premiere was he was there he was he was okay. present. that's when that's when he met ashley um and but prior to that i did ashley's live um ashley had three of the women from uh ready to love our season to mm -hmm. you know get on her live um and you know she asked, she asked for, you know, like, you know, this is her, you know, her first reality show. Initially, she was like, what kind of advice can you impart? Um, I thought, I thought it was great. It was nice, you know, um, but so yeah. Ashley was asked to clarify. Ashley was asking you all advice on her experience participating in reality television on their live. 
on my interview. I didn't I didn't okay. really watch okay. I didn't really watch the other the other um women conversations. Who okay. Interview. Yeah. Well, no, I did watch one and she was lying, but um <laughs> <laughs> but no, it it the whole point of the interview was really like getting to know um her, you know, promoting what she's doing in the upcoming show. And then, okay. you know, she asked, like, what type of advice, you know, would you give? And the one thing I said was do not pay attention to the comments. Yeah. You know, social media is undefeated. You will not win. Like you will go crazy trying to sit here and defend yourself with something that people have already seen and known to be, to them it's true, regardless yeah. of anything else. <laughs> Trust you know, me. It's I funny. <laughs> it's, it's so funny that you mentioned the comment section, the comment section, excuse me, um, as someone who works in media and a lot of the times the things that I do um, are accompanied or presented with a comment section, I've always felt like that section was none of my business, right? right. As the person who created whatever is being discussed, that, mm -hmm. that comment section is for people that receive it to discuss it, right? And so I always think it's the best advice to tell someone not to concern themselves too much with what the comments have to say, because it can kind of affect the choices you make as you participate. Um, that. So yes and no. So mm -hmm. now if you're providing a service, I would want feedback um, oh, as, yeah. as how I can be better, what I can do differently. Um, you know, now, again, you can kind of correlate it to this, um, to Love and Marriage DC. Like, are we providing something? Yes, the show is. It, but it's also entertainment, that entertainment mm -hmm. value. There's That's that gray area. But yeah. for the this is opinions, meaning that these opinions will not sway what the audience sees, what was already, you know, recorded and shown. You feel what I'm saying? So, yeah, I get that. Yeah, <laughs> I get that. Now, let's talk about Mexico, Joy, because everybody has lots of questions about why you were in Mexico for such a long period of time. And as opposed to maybe, um, I guess, bonding or spending time with your new relationship during that time period after um mm -hmm ready to love and then before you transition on to love and marriage dc what can you tell people about how you were spending your time in mexico okay so the quite so the thing is is that mexico was already pre-planned so okay. when i do the seasons it's already pre-planned so when i did ready to love it was already booked mexico that season to perform was already booked so okay. it wasn't as if oh no new love bye like no it wasn't. yeah <laughs> Yeah. It, was, it wasn't that at all. It was already. And that was one thing that um you don't really see it. But I, I said to every person that I made a connection with, like, you know, I'm in Mexico six months out of the year. You know, mm -hmm. is that something that you would be open to as far as traveling, Um, especially with that type of contract where I don't have the ability to keep going back and forth because I'm doing three shows a week? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that was something that, you know, each person that I spoke to new, you know, that's, that's I'm not saying it's non-negotiable, but it's a non-negotiable in these beginning phases because right. this contract was already booked. It was already scheduled. So it was yeah. work. I think there has been a bit of confusion around basically what your purpose was in Mexico at that time. I don't mm -hmm. think many people realize that you were there working and performing yeah. multiple shows a week during that time. Mm -hmm. So that is why Mexico was your focus mm -hmm. in that moment. Correct. Yeah, so I started I started singing in um Mexico in 2013. Um okay. it started being like it was a job I found on like Craigslist like crazy. Wow. Um, okay. <laughs> And that just tells you how old that is. But <laughs> at that time, at that time, it was it was a resort situation. Resort was mm -hmm. easy, great money. They took care mm -hmm. of everything, and you live in the hotel. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So that's you know a great getaway. Um, and I have been coming back, you know, throughout the years, and you know. It's Mexico. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's Who nothing like be in being in Mexico during the winter season. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> absolutely. Um, okay, so now let's let's just jump right into it. Right, this past episode we saw um, things kind of reach a boiling point between you and Ashley um, post the uh, situation at the Christmas Eve Eve party. We're now at the basketball game, <laughs> and I see you sipping your cup right now, Joy. Don't worry, it's lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> well, so so let's talk about you and Ashley, because for most of the fans, um, it seems like you guys have not been able to make it past um, Ashley revealing to her best friend, Alicia, that you and Clifton were actually a married couple. 
at this point in your 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 time spent with Ashley, is that where the pivot occurred in your relationship building with her or or did something else happen to to create what we saw coming to a, a head in this past episode? Well, the whole part whole point of being at Christmas Eve Eve was to move past um, you know, the whole I mean, I think she would like to say that she said what she said because she was upset. But I mean, if you look at the episode, she didn't seem a lick of upset at all. And I'm quite sure that wasn't the first time they had that conversation. Um, we, I was moving past, you know, saying what she said, but then it, what occurred again was, you know, you wouldn't be, you, you wouldn't be here if it, if it wasn't for, you know, for me pretty much, mm -hmm. which I'm like, okay, well, if you, at the end of the day, let's, let's just be honest. You did get a thank you. Clifton thanked you in your DM. So if you, like when you reached out to Clifton and said, I pitched you guys, Clifton said, thank you. So if ever you get a chance, you know, just let her know, scroll up because you got the thank you. Got the thank you. And, mm -hmm. my, and I guess it, you know, we could have moved on until, you know, you added another brick on top of that. And now it's like, you know, What's really the issue? Because mm -hmm. it's not a we, it's an I, and it's a she. And she wanted mm -hmm. it to be something else because I was ready to move forward, you know. Um, but I but I also let's just backtrack for a second. You know, if if a friendship was something that was really important, if that was something she really, really wanted with me, you know, I know we all have like our rules and stuff and what we do but you know girl you could have sent me a text message after you shot that scene you could have called me be like joy oh man you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. i'm just so that so again i you know i i called bs and confessional because no you planned on doing it and i knew when i said it i shouldn't have told her you know what i mean but i did okay i take the l i can own that that mm -hmm. one thing I, I can definitely own that i told clifton immediately after i told him but if you really cared about us building something, you could have been like, yo, man, I just shot this scene and I'm sorry. I'm letting you know in advance. Not, I, I don't think she's sorry that she told, she was just sorry by my reaction. So mm. let's, let's distinguish that particular part. Um, because if you really did care, girl, you could have private little conversation. You could have hit me up and, and let me know, gave me heads up and maybe you wouldn't have looked so bad. Mm. Why were you so protective of that information that you and Clifton had actually taken that step and gotten married? I mean, it really was just for us. I mean, honestly, when we did it, we did it in New York. Um, mm -hmm. My family came with me. We took a train, you know, it, tons of, and it's sort of funny because we hadn't, I hadn't posted any of the photos at all, but it was just a great time. It just, mm -hmm. Yeah. It just was a personal thing. And honestly, like, I did like Ashley, like Ashley at the end of the day. And I say this all the time is a good time. She really is. I, I really do. I, I think she has a, a great heart when she gets her way. And then mm -hmm. when she doesn't get her way, she's a brat. Watch out. She's a brat. <laughs> <laughs> she, <laughs> you know, um, you know, let's just let's just be real. You know, in this season, I'm turning 44. Like I'm talking about this year, you know, and mm -hmm. let's just let's just call up, you know, Let's just call the spade a spade. <laughs> Do you accept Ashley's apology for her initial slip of the tongue or or uh, her telling your business, essentially? Do you accept her apology for that? Um, I was ready to move forward. An apology is for that person. The apology really isn't for me. Yeah, I, yeah. You understand? So I, I, I think... Um, you know, in, in 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 when you're shooting a show, they want you to get over your stuff in like two days, which was like two days. I'm seeing her again, and I'm like, I ain't over it. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, like when she says, "I'm not going to keep apologizing. I'm not going to keep texting." That was just one day. That was the day mm -hmm. we shot that scene. You know, got mm -hmm. the text, got the call. That was it. It's still that. fresh. It was extremely fresh. And then like two, the next, you know, next couple of days, then it was uh, Winner's uh, Romancipation. And mm -hmm. I actually really couldn't talk to Ashley at the time because I had a performance down the street. So oh, you were saving your yeah. vocal rest. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. It wasn't vocal rest. I had to go sing. <laughs> it was it was okay. time. 
Yeah, it oh, really time. Was you didn't have time to talk. I didn't have Got time. It. Yeah, I honestly I really didn't. And um I would have accepted it if she told me before. Mm. I like like because I would have really felt like, wow, you really care about my feelings, not my reaction. She, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like she did mm. it because of my reaction. Not be she she didn't give a hoot about my feelings when she was telling Alicia. You feel what I'm saying? Didn't give a mm. flying fig newton about my, you know, any of mm. that. It wasn't until we shot the scene and she could tell I was pissed. She was like, Oh, I know you had tears in your eyes. Yeah, I wanted to. That wasn't sadness. <laughs> that was um um <laughs> something else. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, I don't believe uh wow, really? Okay, so this is the kind of start we're having. <laughs> wow. Um, I thought it was interesting in this past episode, right? When we saw the the guys get together and have their conversation and they started discussing the situation between you and Ashley. And we know that you have a history, a professional history and personal history um, with Black and with the Duncans, right? With Black and Shirella um, from prior to the show. No, just 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 uh Sherelle's husband. I don't have anything with his wife. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, with Black. Uh and so he seemed very interested in participating in that conversation when they were discussing, you know, um your husband Clifton's disposition as well as Quick's disposition. What do you think was motivating him to be so interested in that conversation at that time? Come on, dust in the cameras. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. I mean, he didn't even come dressed for the, the scene. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you think that was motivated by his, do you think there's feelings there? Is, is, there, is, there, is there still resentment? What do you th think lies kind of between you and him currently? Oh, I mean, there isn't anything. Um mm -hmm. The past is the past. Uh, in 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 the season, the past is coming into the present. So stuff that wasn't even being talked about for such a long time is now coming back up again. And you know, people want to use you know the platform to redeem themselves or clear the air or whatever. But I had moved on years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wasn't making it important. It was just important, you know. I guess for the storyline. <laughs> Really? Okay. So are, are you guys cordial now? What is your relationship now? Because what we're seeing currently was filmed over a year ago, correct? Uh, Yes. Okay. Yes. So mm -hmm. what are things like now between you and Black when you guys have to share space? Oh, we don't. We don't share space. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so there's... <laughs> So there is no that 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 story is pretty much wrapped up. Then there's oh, no. Oh yeah, it, it was okay. wrapped up what seven, eight, ten years ago. Like it was, it was wrapped up. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um, what did you think about the conversation that we saw tonight between you and Irena? Okay, when Irena decided to have a conversation with you about um the optics per se of mm -hmm. the friendship between yourself and uh Carmen and your husband Clifton how did you feel about that conversation watching it uh play out on air well you know I respect Arena 100 percent and you know mm -hmm. a lot of us when we're in something we can't really see the you know how people see it in in, yeah. in perspectives and it's really coming from a good place um the videos and stuff that were posted like honestly a lot of those videos they were either waiting for me I was coming there or yeah. it was like I had to leave so it wasn't those those videos weren't videos of like oh we're doing something behind Joy's back like that wasn't the case at all I either was there and had to go or they were waiting for me to get there yeah <laughs> but I appreciate you know Arena you know Arena looks out for people she loves and cares about and and you know I received that I mean that's what a friend does absolutely and I thought it was interesting um Last week, I saw a live that took place with uh, Winter and Ashley and Carmen, actually. And Carmen was saying that she had uh, mixed feelings about some things that she saw on the show pertaining to like the way that you and Clifton were actually discussing your friendship with her and Clifton not necessarily 
interrupting the conversation that people were having about, you know, this not looking good or him clearing it up per se. Did well, you see I the mean, ain't nobody, did? ain't nobody tell you to rub up in his beard now. <laughs> <laughs> so how what, was the beard rub okay with you? How did what, what's up with that? Joy? Oh, how did you feel about I, that, honey? I didn't I didn't see that till uh, when we saw the episode before the reunion. So you saw okay okay. Oh, I didn't know. I was like, oh, that's you comfortable? <laughs> yeah, very comfortable. So was that typical of which was is there a was that comfort level something new for you or had that always been present? In I hadn't, I hadn't, I didn't, when we're, when we're all together, when we were all, mm -hmm. you know, we're all together, like I never saw that. I didn't see that. You get what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So it wasn't mm -hmm. until that when I saw the episode and I was like, Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you were surprised just like the rest of us were, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, how do you feel about their friendship today? Is there a friendship today? Oh no, that's gone. Really? Oh, okay. Dead, dead in the ground, honey. Really? Put it on the Chinese lantern, light it, let it, let it cast <laughs> off into the water in the sunset. <laughs> now, will we see that play out on the season, or is that something that happened during the off season? It. Um. So. No, you actually won't. Um, at the end of the season, you know, Carmen draws her line. So. <laughs> really? I'm telling you these cameras, baby. <laughs> so they're changing things. So before. OK, so let's dig a little deeper into that then, because obviously for you all to even involve Carmen in your story on this show, there had to be a, a genuine actual connection and friendship amongst three of you all. Of course. Like I didn't I didn't. Um, become close with Carmen until after ready to love. And, mm -hmm. you know, Clifton's like, she's good people. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And one thing I'll say that Carmen is very, when it comes to like PR and pushing you and motivating you, like you guys need to be in this room, like yeah, hands down, hands mm -hmm. down. But, you know, I've dealt with enough Judas in my life. So. Mm. Okay. You know. <laughs> There's been conversations about, um, the time period in between the two shows for you all. And when Clifton wanted to, uh, the kind of what people are saying rather, and I love the fact that we can kind of clear all this up, right? Uh, what people are saying is that during the time that uh, between Ready to Love and Love and Marriage DC, while you were in Mexico working, Carmen was coming and, and uh, making appearances with Clifton. Um, mm -hmm. When they went to the premiere of Love and Marriage DC, apparently she was there with him. Um, and and she's been vocal about the fact that she kind of stood in the gap in those moments. Mm -hmm. What was that? What was that dialogue like at that time uh, about her even like attending events in public with him and making appearance with him, appearances with him, considering the history that they had on the show um, and them now being sharing space in that way? Was that a conversation that you and Clifton had to have or was mm -hmm. it just a natural, you know, progression of the friendship? Well, it was a natural progression of the friendship because Carmen is in PR. Mm -hmm. And so those rooms and everything that Clifton was in was because of Carmen's connections and, you know, Got being it. in the know and what's going on. Um, Carmen also really played a part as, you know, like a protector, not just of Clifton, but, you know, of several of the other men from Ready to Love. You know, Demetrius, Paul, you know what I mean? So she was kind of like, you know, like the sister, you know, making sure like the wrong chick ain't coming in the, in the area and Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I appreciated that because I wasn't there. You know what I mean? So um no, I mean she she played she played a, a great role, you know, as a PR person does. Like if this is my client, I'm gonna make sure you're in the room. I'm gonna make sure you're talking to the right people. And um, no, at no point did I ever see it or find it to be um crossing the line or being inappropriate or you know, anything like that. Cause at the end of the day, it, it wasn't like they were alone. You know what I mean? It, it, yeah. it wasn't that it wasn't that type of thing. And I mean, I, I have that trust in Clifton and I had, and I have that in, you know, I had that in Carmen as well. So this clears up a lot though, about why they were even together because they were functioning as client and representative, not mm -hmm. so much as friends. They had well, a friendship, but they have they were... a friendship, but they have a business relationship as well. Okay, yeah. so that would explain it then. That would yeah. explain her making those appearances. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as the 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 breakdown, I guess, of your friendship, that was appears based on what you're sharing with us today to be unrelated to really 
her friendship with Clifton. It appears to be related to you said she drew a line in the in the there's a division amongst the friendship group. So the breakdown of your relationship had nothing to do with her being too comfortable with Clifton there. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was it was me. I I I had no I had no clue. Mm. I I didn't I didn't know there was waves in the water. I had no idea. I just oh, really? Okay. Well, you know, uh could have told me. Wow. <laughs> you could have you could have told me. Had so many opportunities. I've been trying to talk to you, you know, like you you really could have told me. Um, as opposed to the seven cameras that propped up and you chose to sit there and said what you said, could have told mm. me. Mm. Tell Clifton that. Wow. The same. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So, okay. So let's moving away from that then. The okay. comment of it all, right? Thank you. Uh, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we saw... <clears throat> A really interesting because we know you all are close with the Tylers at this point. We see you guys hanging out off camera, actually building a relationship. So we saw um, Jamie and Irena meet with an advisor um, to discuss, you know, him mentioning some things that went on in their past um, and, and bringing it up um, when it comes to what was going on currently in their relationship. You're a married woman. You know what I mean? How do you feel, Joy, about forgiveness as it relates to past transgressions in a relationship when you're married and then bringing them up again once you're angry about it? Oh, again, forgiveness is just like an apology. It really mm -hmm. is from the person who is issuing <laughs> it. You know, um, a lot of times, a lot of things don't necessarily get resolved just because I said it doesn't mean I really mean it. Um, mm. I, I know that for me, I, for forgiving is big because it really depends on what I'm forgiving. But when it comes to a relationship and wanting to move on, you kind of have to like keep communicating about it, like doing that check in, making sure that you you are OK, that this was the past and where we are right now. We're doing this together moving forward. Like it's it's that communication because we do stuff so we can like move on the next day. But emotionally, we may not have moved on from it. But that's really like, mm -hmm. you know. A check in. I mean, Jamie and Randy, they've been together for a minute. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, they have. <laughs> you yeah. know, um, but I'm I'm you know, I feel like in in a lot of relationships, period, like that there's certain things that we may not you got a little got a little bit of spice that's still like got a little residual. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a little residual, <laughs> you know. Um, but it takes time. But the, the beauty of it is it not hindering what you guys are doing and moving forward. It's one thing if you bring it up and that's the moment, but it's not stopping your forward, you know, movement. Um, yeah. yeah, it takes time. It ain't, it ain't no real blueprint. <laughs> Do you think that Ashley is jealous of you? I think, um, yes. But what she's jealous about is I have like the one thing that I really think she really wanted the most. And that's the friendship with Arena. Mm. You know, I think a lot of it really boils down to that's something that deep down and it's like it's like she never said that. But if you watch the thing, you know, oh, Arena went outside, to, you know, check on her, not me, even though she was in a house full of people, um, you know, it's uh, well, Arena's doing or she's taking sides or she's you know what I mean? Um, it really is. I, I really feel like that's what she she wants the most. She really wanted that friendship with Arena. And this is something Arena and I we're building naturally at the end of the day you gravitate towards you know people yeah. who are similar to you you know they have it's that organic. Awesome, like that organic but also that level of integrity and respect mm -hmm. you know what i mean um you know at the end of, like everybody doesn't have the things that you gravitate towards mm -hmm. now joy you strike me as the type of person the type of black person okay we'll say <laughs> Who, who knows the, uh, the golden rule of, of visiting someone's home, right? When we walk in the house, we speak, right? Now, Ashley is con firmly convicted that you did not say hello when you walked in her house. Okay. Can you clear that up, Joy? Like, well, what, what's up with up. all of that? Yeah. I did speak. So when you come in, you come in on the first floor. I spoke to everybody on the first floor. I said, hey, everybody, this is. Then I mm -hmm. go down to the basement. And then the room where everyone is in is a whole bunch of people. Mm -hmm. And I, when I, I walked straight. I didn't walk, like, to the left. Or to the, I walked straight. I said, hello, Jamie. Sherelle's husband was there. He spoke. I ain't say nothing. And I... <laughs> 
<laughs> went around him and I saw little Jamie and Brit. Like I spoke. I just, mm -hmm. I did not go to the side where all of the women were. I didn't, I, but I did speak. And perhaps let's just change the verbiage. Perhaps what she wanted was for me to speak to her first. Mm -hmm. So say that. Don't say that I came into the house and didn't mm -hmm. speak. No, I spoke to everyone that I passed and saw. I didn't speak to you first. And, you know, let's just, let's just say that. But yeah, no, I'm not a rude individual at, by any means whatsoever. Well, we saw that to be true when you, or to not be true, I should say, when you guys arrived at the suite, at the Wizards game this week, and you went in and you spoke to everyone that was in the suite individually by name, and, and you made it clear. Uh, and I thought that was funny. And I was that motivated by the discourse about you not speaking when you came in at the Christmas Eve Eve party or were you just being yourself and speaking to everyone? Well, the, 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 the discord. Well, I speak to people. So mm -hmm. for me, I, I, I naturally say hello. Yeah. Um, but that's also, you know, you also speak to kind of get the temperature of the room, you know? Okay. <laughs> okay. So it's kind of like, you know, if I speak and you don't say anything, it's like, okay, well then we're not going to have a conversation today. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's fine. Um, but no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a polite person. I'm a sociable person. Like I'm comfortable in my skin. I'm able to communicate. So no, I'm not a rude individual. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I speak. They yeah. didn't speak back. So what does that say? <laughs> <laughs> they, they didn't speak when you came in the door. Okay. So let's talk about the conversation that you and Ashley had when you guys stepped outside of the suite, right? Which we were so happy to see that that's what you meant when you said, do you want to step outside? Because per the trailers and the, the teasers for the show, that could have went a couple different ways, you know. Do you want to? That would have went a couple different ways for uh, love and hip hop. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we like, were all like, Whoo, "Okay, good, all right." Mm -hmm. So once you guys got outside, talk to me about what your your intention was for that conversation. Right? Was it just to kind of clear the air? Was it to kind of try to just get a fresh start with Ashley? Like, what was your goal in having that conversation with her? The goal was to move forward from, mm -hmm. you know, um, the negative place that we're in, being able to coexist, um, being able to, you know, accept each other as mm -hmm. is and be able to just move forward. Um, she didn't want to have that conversation. And I get that. Like, that's, you know, um, it. but, you know, we come to do a job and mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's it, it is what it is. Um, but in that, I think that, I think one of the things, you know, there's this whole talk of like jealousy, 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 jealousy. Um, we know that Clifton didn't say anything about being jealous. This was, you know, either a bad play of telephone, um, from quick to Ashley or Ashley just heard jealous and just was like, oh, hell no. I mean, she wears jumpsuits mm. and whatever It's nothing to be mm -hmm. jealous about. Um, and, and again, a lot of times when people say jealousy, it's not about your, the outward appearance. It's about mm -hmm. the inner stuff. You know, um, but no one said it when we came into that suite. That was like the first thing she wanted to say. So I heard that you think that I'm jealous of you and quick immediately. Says, no, no, that's not that's not what was said. That was, you know, we did it that that's not. But she kept that narrative going and she's still keeping it going. We in how many months? She's still keeping that going. No one said it. Like we, so we don't. You know, we didn't come. But the whole point of the conversation was for us to move forward. She didn't want to have the conversation. So that entire conversation was no joy. I don't want to move forward. I don't want to be in the same space with you. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. So it's like, OK, then we're done. And so then to clarify, right, the 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 section of the conversation between you and Ashley, where you said where she said that there was a rumor that she was jealous of you. And you said, well, they may have said that. And she brought up. Clifton, your husband's name and Carmen's name. You said they, yeah, they said it. They said to you that someone said that Ashley was jealous of you, or what? What was clear? No, that when we walked, when we walked into the suite, right? Mm -hmm. We spoke to everybody, said hello, and you see how Clifton and I are positioned. When I was like, Ashley, do you want to step outside? That was our position. Um, but when she turns around, she was like, so I hear that, you know, I'm supposed mm -hmm. to be jealous of you. You get what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. she brought that up. Now, mind you, if you saw the scene between Quick and Clifton, mm -hmm. Clifton never says that. Mm -hmm. Quick says that. Mm -hmm. You know, like, what do you think? She's jealous of something? 
You know what I mean? The the word jealous did not come out of Clifton's mouth. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But my thing is, there's this thing where Ashley wants to hear what she wants to hear. Okay. It doesn't matter who said it, if you know. It doesn't matter. The fake and phony, because that wasn't how that situation went. Arena and I even told her that. Um, still, that wasn't the conversation. That wasn't how that happened. She still tries to roll as if I'm being negative towards her, which that wasn't the case. The jealousy thing, I didn't say it. Clifton didn't say it, but because she heard that, she continued to keep that narrative going. And so, you know, she had that wall, she had that block and, you know, what can you do with it? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, it was a hell of an episode. <laughs> uh, it well, was I mean, it was, it was a hell of an episode in a way that, you know, moving forward, as you continue to see, to see the rest of it, you'll, you'll mm -hmm. see why the division is the way it is. Okay. Um, you'll see, um, it, it, it's difficult when you're not able to get through, through communication and, and people really, um, wanting something more than being in this negative space, you know, like mm -hmm. it's, it. again, this is, this is last year, you know, and I mean, shoot, people are living it like this stuff happened yesterday, baby. And I'm just yes. like, are you serious <laughs> right now? Like, this was like, we already know where we stand and, mm -hmm. um, you know, the level of disrespect. I mean, in that suite, the disrespect was real, you know, um, more than what we saw in the episode. I don't know what y'all saw in the episode. I just okay. know, that I know that at no point would I ever disrespect Jamie. At no point would I ever disrespect Quick. It's not in me to do so. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and when you begin to cross those lines, you know, uh, uh, getting back to a better place and a happier place is extremely difficult. And, you know, it may not happen or it may. Well, we sure look forward to to seeing it play out for the rest of the season, Joy. <laughs> uh, you know, again, you, you and Clifton have been a great addition to the Love and Mary's Thank DC you. family, and we're very much so enjoying you uh, being a part of this story. So thank, thank you, you so me. much for hanging out with us today, Joy. And thank you for your patience in the beginning of our conversation. No problem. Uh, Stop using up HP computers. I know it was an app. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk again. All right. For sure. Thank you. Right. Take care. <laughs>